السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نواصل بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى من قطع من حديث في المرة الفاتحة تكلمنا عن the third the first party سميناه قلنا عبارة عن internal audit و the second party external audit وتكلمنا بعد ذلك عن the third party certification audit وقلنا إن شاء الله حنتكلم في المقطع ده عن بعض السكيلز بعض بعض المهارات اللي بنحتاج لها أثناء عملية ال فيما يتعلق بالأوديت قبل ما ندخل للحاجة دي لابد نعرف نحن عاوزين شنو نحن عاوزين نطابق المواصفة ISO 9001-2015 standard quality management system والمواصفة حدد حددت requirements متطلبات نحن عاوزين مؤسستنا برضو تحقق الأرباح اللي هي من أجلها قامت المؤسسة objectives and the strategy وفي نفس الوقت عاوزين عاوزين نرضي الكاستمر وفي نفس الوقت عاوزين نتماشى مع the statutory requirements and the regulatory requirements اللي قلنا المتطلبات القانونية وهيئة المواصفات المقاييس اللي عندنا إلى آخره فده بيطلب إنه المؤسسة بتاعتنا internally داخليا قلنا يكون عندها internal audit من وقت لآخر قلنا التكرار هو على حسب the scale of the organization or the complexity and the operation of the processes إلى آخره. نبدأ الآن نأخذ نموذج عملي لكيسز وإن شاء الله بعد ذلك حنلخص بعض السكيلز لا علاقة بالاكسترنال أو الانترنال يا جماعة في النهاية ما في اختلاف كبير صراحة. الانترنال هو عملية بتاع التحقق داخلية والاستعداد للاكسترنال وبالتالي إذا إحنا الآن فهمنا الاكسترنال أوردي فهمنا الانترنال لأن الاكسترنال هي أشمل وعم. من قبل ناس بيجوا من خارج المؤسسة بيعملوا لنا اوديت بيعملوا لنا تشيك انسبكشن في السيستم بتاعنا اور كيو ام اس هل هو مطابق للاوبجيكتيفز اور للريكويرمنتس اوف ذا كواليتي مانجمنت سيستم اللي هي الاي سو 9001 ولا لا بكل بساطة حناخد كيسز ان شاء الله بعد ذاك آه الكيسز نفسه حيكون فيه شرح داخلي لكن بعد ان شاء الله انا حعقب على بعض الاشياء المهمة اللي محتاج لها هي عبارة عن تلخيص للتو كيسز نتكلم الآن عن كيس 1 وركزوا معي في الكيسز إن شاء الله هي نفسها فيها شرح داخلي لكن نحن برضو بنحاول إن شاء الله بعدها بعد الكيسز نعمل ملخص لأهم الأشياء فأنا أثناء المقطع شغال ما بتدخل في الشرح لكن الخلاصة ما قيل إن شاء الله بجي بتكلم عنها في نقاط أنا استخلصتها من الفيديو نفسه نواصل الآن John? Oh. This is Lydia Romich. She's one of the auditors from the assessment team. Good morning. Nice to meet morning. you. Thanks a lot, Thomas. Uh, come on in. I'm sorry the place is such a mess. Uh, we're usually a lot neater than this. Um, come on in and uh, have a seat. Oh. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Lydia is an auditor who is evaluating our quality system. Her input will help the registrar decide whether to certify that we meet the requirements of ISO 9001. John has already made several mistakes and is about to make a lot more. Watch. What exactly can I do for you? Well, John, to help me get an idea of how your department is structured, can you tell me what your position is here at KBR? Uh, well, I'm sort of like the guy at the front of the canoe, you know. <laughs> no matter what happens, it's always my fault. Hmm. Uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm the work group leader. Mm. On a particular project? Yes. And that would be? Uh, the, the big oil refining job. <clears throat> oh. What is it that your group does for the project? Oh, well, <laughs> there is plenty of work to go around, I'll tell you that. Um, uh, you know, bids and, and requisitions. <clears throat> What are your responsibilities? Well, I look over the shoulder of the people in the work group, and then I report the PM and the CTE. Do you have a copy of your job description? Sure. Uh, should be... Uh, let's come back to that okay. a little later. 
What procedures do you follow when you're preparing a requisition? Well, that all depends on a lot of variables and factors involved. Do you have an example of a requisition that you can show me? Oh, we have a whole stack of them stashed away in the files. Great. Uh, hey, Sharon? Hey, Bill, is Sharon out there? I don't see her. Well, could you find her, please, and tell her I need a little help in here? <laughs> Whoops, right under my nose. Never mind. Uh, this is kind of a weird one, but at least it'll give us something to look at. Is that the latest copy? Uh, let's see. August. Okay, it's old, but at least it'll give, give you an idea of what they look like. Can you explain it to me? I'll try. Like we said, John has made a lot of mistakes so far in his audit. His biggest mistake was in failing to prepare for the audit. لعل الآن ندي بعض المداخلات أنا كنت مع وجه داخل لكن اتضح إنه الأمر بعض الناس ممكن تكون ما مجمعة معانا شوية طيب الحديث لما بدأ يا جماعة ده عبارة عن نموذج ل ل external audit الآن جا داخل ل external auditor وده الشخص اللي حيعمله معاه هو ال the audit هو عبارة عن leader أي إن كان فكانت في أسئلة موجهة له إنه مثلا ال position بتاعته هو شنو على سبيل المثال ونماذج للبروسيدرز او ال 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 كيف بيعملوا فولو اب للبروسيس بتاعهم فشفنا انه شخص ملخبط ما مستعد كلامه ما مرتب بيساله عن اي سؤال بيرد بمعلومات جنرال معلومات عامه مثلا سالته عن الوظيفه بتاعتك شنو قال لك والله يا اخي انا وظيفتي انه كل مشكله بتحصل في راسي فده دي ما وظيفه لانه صراحه الشخص ما مركز ولا محدد الجوب ديسكريبشن ولا محدد his position exactly تحديدا حيعمل شنو خطوات المطلوب منه شنو الى اخره بعدين خدت كوبايه بتاع الشاي قدامه اتكشحت ورق ما منظم وخدت ما عرفنا كره بتاعت كره العالم جنبه والورق مبشتن طلبوا منه ورقه معينه او نموذج ل ل ل ل لبروسيجر معين ما موجود قدامه طوالي اثناء اثناء الاوديتنج طلب من زميل من زميله بصوره ما ظريفه في النهايه كان البيبر جنبه او الكوبي جنبه لما سالته هل هي الفيرجن الاحد النسخه هي حديثه يعني ابديت ولا لا او تليرس 1 قال ما عارف في النهايه لقى قديمه قلت له طيب اشرح لي برضه ما عارف خلفيه فبعد شوي حنشوف الان شرح للكلام ده بصوره بس باللغه الانجليزيه انه كيف الان يتبع الخطوات العلميه او الخطوات الصحيحه اثناء الاوديتنج وانا عاوزك تتخيل او عاوزك كمان معي نحن الان قلنا الدوره بتاعتنا هي ذا internal اوديت لكن بتخد نفسنا في الاكسترنال اوديت تو بي ريدي حتى نكون مستعدين وجاهزين ده الان نموذج لكيس حقيقيه بيجي شخص الان من الخارج بيعمل لك اوديتنج بيعمل انسبكشن لك او تشيك للشغل بتاعك او للمؤسسه ان جنرال اكيد حيمر لي حيمر على كل الديبارتمنتس فحشوف هل كل الديبارتمنت يعني كل الاجزاء في المؤسسه بتاعتك قايمين بشغلهم ولا لا ده الان نموذج لشخص الان ممكن يكون مدير في مؤسستك او سوبرفايزر ودي عمليه الاوريدي تمت معه اكيد طبعا التقييم حيكون آه يعني يعني فيلير انه الشخص ده ما ملتزم بالكواليتي مانجمنت سيستم ريكويرمنتس او بالتحديد بالايسو 9001 uh, 2015 كيو ام اس ريكويرمنتس بعد شويه حيعقب على الاخطاء دي وانا ان شاء الله بعدين حعقب عليها مع نهايه الكورس او مع نهايه الفيديوز ان شاء الله في بعض النقاط ان شاء الله I'll try Like we said, John has made a lot of mistakes so far in his audit. His biggest mistake was in failing to prepare for the audit. He figured that because he knows his job so well, he could come up with the right answers off the top of his head. Big mistake. When asked what his position is at KBR, he tried to joke with the auditor. An audit is no time for jokes. His answers were vague and incomplete, making Lydia's job more difficult. John didn't have any examples on hand to illustrate the kind of work his group performs. When he finally stumbled onto an example of a document the auditor asked for, it was an outdated copy of an unusual case. John had a written job description, but wasn't sure where it was. To appreciate what a registrar audit is all about, we have to first think about what ISO 9001 is all about. ISO 9001 is an international standard for quality management systems, regardless of what business you're in. Our clients expect that our quality management system meets the requirements of ISO 9001. 
Maintaining our ISO 9001 registration is not always easy. Our quality management system works well at all levels, but we must also be able to demonstrate that it is effective, that we continually make improvements, and most importantly, that we satisfy our clients. That is where the audit process comes in. To determine that our system continues to be what it should be, independent auditors evaluate us periodically. A major goal of this video is to take some of the mystery out of the audit process. You'll soon have a much better understanding of what the auditor is looking for and what's expected of you. After all, it's far easier to score points when you understand the rules of the game. Here's how we can put our best foot forward during the quality assurance audit. Prepare, relax, be professional. Let's take a closer look, beginning with audit protocol. How should you conduct yourself? First, realize that the auditor is not a hostile invader. Auditors are not conducting an inquisition, nor are they prosecuting attorneys. The auditor is a guest, a professional like you, just doing a job. Be courteous, helpful and friendly, but don't overdo it. Remember at all times that you're speaking on the record. The auditor's job is to listen closely wherever she is. First impressions are very important. That is true in any first meeting between two people, but is most certainly the case when a quality assurance auditor steps through your door. One of the most important things you can do to prepare for an audit is to clean up your workplace, including your electronic files. Clear your desk. Dispose of any out-of-date material and make sure that your files are up to date. You don't want to go into an audit with a stack of papers to be filed. A good first impression will go a long way to making the audit go smoothly. The better organized you are, the easier the audit will be for both of you. We will know well in advance when an auditor is coming, but there is no way of knowing which of several hundred employees the auditor will choose to interview. You may have 10 or 15 minutes advance notice of an audit, or be as unlucky as John and have no notice at all. The auditor's interview path is nearly always influenced by the documents she chooses to pursue. For example, the auditor may start in procurement, where she sees a purchase order for a pump. Then she may decide to see engineering and review the requisition for that particular pump. All of which is to say, there's no way to predict where or when the auditor will appear. Have on hand a copy of your job description and project responsibilities relating to current jobs. If it's electronic, you could put it in your bookmarks. The auditor will probably ask to see it. Job inputs are very important in the quality audit trail. You should be able to explain clearly what your job inputs are, where they came from, and you should know the input requirements. You should know the status of job inputs. For instance, is a particular set of inputs preliminary or is it final? You should know how to determine whether the inputs you're working with are the latest revisions, and you should be able to produce examples of your input data. It isn't enough just to know or think you know these things. You must be able to briefly and clearly explain the process to a third party, the auditor. The auditor will also be very interested in how we control our work. You should be able to explain clearly what you do with the inputs you receive and quickly produce copies of the written procedures that you follow. Where job outputs are concerned, be able to describe, first of all, what your job outputs are. Know what the requirements are and they'll be checked and approved. You should know who uses your outputs. You should know the procedure for revising your outputs and be able to quickly produce examples of your outputs. Planning is a major part of our quality system. The auditor may want to hear about or see examples. Examples might be an execution strategy, a coordination procedure, a quality plan, a procurement plan, an engineering plan, a safety plan, work group plan, or other types of work plans. Have appropriate examples close at hand or know where to find them electronically. In short, there will be many points at which the auditor will ask to see examples that show how we do things. One good way to prepare for this is to review your files ahead of time. Look for typical examples of work inputs and outputs and work plans. Be careful to stick with typical examples. An auditor will often follow up on the example to see what the upstream supplier and downstream user did with it. If you provide an oddball example as John did a few minutes ago, you can create problems for others who will be asked for documentation relating to it. Along those same lines, 
Don't be surprised if an auditor asks to see a particular file that you haven't mentioned. She may be following up on an example from an earlier interview. So far, we have considered basic audit protocol, how to prepare for the audit, and how to organize certain materials so you can get to them quickly. Now let's consider a few basic do's and don'ts that apply to any serious interview, including an audit such as this. The rule of thumb in an audit is to answer all questions thoroughly, but be brief and stick to the point. Try to avoid giving long-winded, complicated answers. The auditor is not an expert in our business, but is an expert at looking for problems in the quality process. Any good auditor will try to encourage you to open up and talk freely, but it is more to your advantage not to do so. An auditor may, for example, sit poker-faced and silent after you finish answering a question. This is to encourage you to keep talking, which many people do. Quit while you're ahead. Avoid elaborating on your answer just to fill the silence. Don't air grievances or complaints, even if the subject has nothing to do with quality. And avoid discussing topics that are outside your area of responsibility. If you don't know the answer to a question, say so. The auditor may pose a hypothetical question to see what you would do in a given case. It's all right to say you would have to consult your procedures or your supervisor. No one expects you to be a walking policy manual. Among our other practical do's and don'ts for the audit process are these. If the auditor seems to be asking the same question several times, it may mean that she doesn't understand your answers. Instead of going into a lengthier explanation, ask the auditor to clarify the question. Think before you speak and make sure you understand the question. The auditor may not have an EPC background and may have unrealistic ideas about how we do our business. She may be persistent in her questioning. If you think you have answered a question fully and she continues to pursue a subject, don't be afraid to ask what she's looking for. She may be pursuing something that is just not done in our industry. You may have to explain that to her. When the auditor restates something you told her earlier or asks you to agree with her interpretation, pay close attention. Make sure you agree completely before you confirm what she says. She may be preparing to write up a deficiency. Do your best to avoid using qualifiers in your answers, such as, we usually do it that way, or most of the time, we do this such and such. It's better to make simple, positive statements, such as, we do it this way, unless there's a different contract requirement, in which case we would issue a project-specific procedure. And finally, be sure to have someone hold your calls during the interview, and avoid interrupting someone else who's in the midst of one. Let's go back now and give John a chance to redeem himself. طيب الان يا جماعه زود اللي ادانا النصايح ان شاء الله انا حلخصها بصوره اوسع بعد ما نشاهد الكيسز باذن الله رب العالمين حلخصها وحنفصل فيها ان شاء الله بصوره يعني حتى نشرحها لكل الناس انا ما دخلت اثناء الشرح لانه هو تكلم عن بعض النصايح باللغه الانجليزيه اخواننا اللي ما شاء الله واخواتنا اللي بيجيدوا اللغه الانجليزيه اكيد ما حيكونوا محتاجين لشرحي ولكن انا بتكلم عن العموم معنا بعض الناس قد يحتاجوا الى مور اكسبلنيشن ان شاء الله انا بعملها بعد نهاية المقطع ده إن شاء الله أول مقطع القادم بزيادة رب العالمين الآن حنشاهد شكل الأوريد بصورة أفضل من جبال جبال كان الشخص ده ملخبط أموره ما معروفة ما مستعد ما مجهز نفسه ما عنده كوبيز نسخ أو أي حاجة من الانبوتس المحتاج لها البروسيديات البروسيسيس نشوف الآن لو أعدنا المنظر بشكل مرتب وده الحاجة المفترض نمشي عليها نحن يكون الإنسان محضر نفسه هو علق قال الأوديت يا جماعة هو ما عبارة عن عملية بتاعت معركة أو عملية عملية بتاعت خصام والأوديت ده ما الشخص جاي إنه يعاديك هو شخص جاي يتأكد ببساطة إنه هل أنت أو هل أنت ماشين بنظام عندكم كواليتي مانجمنت سيستم وفق المتطلبات ولا لا بكل بساطة فهو بيسأل أسئلة عشان يعرف ويتأكد إنه البروسيدرز والبروسيسز ماشى وفق الستاندرد تمام نشوف الان لو عدنا المشهد شكله حيكون كيف watch now and see what a difference it makes when he knows how to prepare for and handle himself during the audit well john as you know i'm here from the registrar mm -hmm. and i'm here to monitor kbr's quality system can i ask you some questions sure what is your position here at kbr i'm the machinery work group leader on the big oil refinery job great 
What is it that your group does on this project? We prepare requisitions for the equipment. We review the bids and then we review and approve the vendor data. I see. And what are your responsibilities? I oversee the work group and I review and approve their work. And then I report our progress to the project manager and the chief engineer. Are your responsibilities written down anywhere? Yes, mm -hmm. right here on our online documentation. Oh, yes. Very good. Now, you said that your group prepares requisitions. Yes. What procedures do they follow to prepare a requisition? Well, that depends. There are several procedures, and the one we use depends on the type of equipment we use. Here's an example of one of the more common ones we use. It's a procedure for purchasing pumps. Mm -hmm. Do you have an example of a pump requisition that you could show me? Yes, we normally handle all of our data electronically, but let me print a requisition for you. Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. This top page is the requisition worksheet. Oh, it's a, what is that? It's a listing of all the equipment to be purchased. Mm. Next is the attachment index listing all the data sheets and the specifications attached to the requisition. What is a data sheet? It's a standardized form we use to mm. specify requirements for a piece of equipment that we want to buy. There are many types of data sheets. Um, there are five data sheets in this requisition. The first one is the project design data sheet as it pertains to the environment. Others are the pump, motor, lubricants, and noise level requirements. Wouldn't it be better to have just one data sheet for each requisition? Not really. Uh, that would mean we would have to have a customized sheet for every requisition. Mm. As it is, we have a series of standardized forms we use to address components like motors or a specific requirement like the noise level. Okay. Is that the latest copy? Yes. If you'd like, I can verify that on the computer. No, that won't be necessary. You said earlier that noise is a specific job requirement. Yes. How would you know that? That information is in the project design data. Oh. Do you have a copy of the project design data? Yes. It's available in the project electronic file system. Would you like to see it? No, not necessary. No. What kinds of um, information can you give me about the pump data sheet? Well, um, again, we can... When the auditor's ready to leave, show interest in her opinion. It's perfectly all right to ask for feedback or opinions from the auditor. You want to learn as much as you can from the audit experience, and there's no better way than to ask the auditor. طيب الان يا جماعه شاهدنا ملخص لبعض النقاط اللي تكلم عنها المقطع سابقا ولعله نحتاج نقف معاها وقفه ان شاء الله ونفصل فيها المقطع القادم ان شاء الله حنفصل في النقاط دي وتقريبا حنسمع كيس ان شاء الله حنشاهد كيس اخرى ونبدا نفصل في خلاصه الاشياء دي والدروس المستفاده حتى نتعلم مفهوم ده internal audit و ده external audit ونكون ان شاء الله مستعدين داخليا لل audit وخارجيا لل third party او ال ال certification bodies stay tuned اسئلتكم نقاشاتكم حواراتكم تعليقاتكم في انتظار في الجروب التفاعلي السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته